All right, Coach. Uh, you've made some pretty impressive second half adjustments the last two weeks. Talk me through kind of what the conversation is in the locker room and, and what went into those adjustments. Uh, yeah, I wish I made the adjustments a little bit earlier in the game. It was some of the conversation, <laughs> you know. No, they. I think really what it is is, uh, you know, like in last week's game, they had a couple of weeks to prepare for us, and so there was some new stuff that they were throwing at us, which is what you do, especially when you're coming off of a bye, bye week. And and so, you know, the biggest deal uh, with these young men that have that we got to see versus Oklahoma State, we got to see it obviously versus Kansas Kansas State, is is that there's no panic in them, and and there was certainly a. Uh, time frame there where you're, where some folks could have hit the panic button. You know, we knew we couldn't let the thing get out of control from us uh, because it'd be a tough climb back and it was tough enough already. Uh, but I think, you know, from a sideline standpoint and then being able to go in uh, after the first half at halftime and really get on the board and explain it and, you know, more calm setting and stuff, uh, you know, they grasp it. They understand football. They've been through a lot now. They've got some notches under their belt, so to speak. There's some experience. We've gotten to see a lot of things, and they know how to make those adjustments now. And so, you know, had we been in something like that earlier in the season, game one, game two, I don't know if we could have done some of those things. But now with the experience and stuff that they have under underneath them, then, then we're able to go out and, and better execute. How tough is it for, for you guys to make an adjustment when you're preparing for – Maybe one type of quarterback, and then here comes a different type of quarterback <laughs> coming out there. Does that play into it at all, Coach? Oh, it certainly does, you know, because sometimes you don't know a lot about the next quarterback and, and what you're going to get. And, and uh, you know, there's been a couple of quarterbacks over, you know, when we went and we played KU, and, and the quarterback goes down, and, and the number two guy comes in. He drops dimes all over the place and, and stuff like that. And, and you kind of had, and we knew that this kid, I knew who the kid was, and, and we knew what type of wheels that he had and, and stuff like that. So you knew that you were going to have to contend with that. Didn't know that, that his arm was going to be that strong. And so it starts to change a little bit of what you're doing. And, and then, you know, the same thing happened with, with K State. And, uh, you know, the quarterback comes in and, and not only can he run the ball, but he can throw the ball just as well. And so I don't know, to be honest with you, with the K-State deal, I don't know that it changed a lot of things from what Martinez was going to do as well. And, uh, uh, you know, just what we were getting, I think they continued to carry their game plan that they had implemented for us, um, you know, with the second string guy as well. Overall, I mean, we're past the halfway point. What have you liked so far from the defense? What are some areas you want to see um, some growth in over the last five games? Well, obviously, the, the thing that I like from uh, from the defense is just kind of what I've already hinted on. You know, this is a team that, that loves football and and they understand the game and, and stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, but they got that experience under their belt and, and now they're – able to make those adjustments and, and not panicking in those in those tight situations. You know, the thing that I want us to get better at, and, and they do too, and they know it, is we got to start compiling, uh, you know, getting close to a full four quarters. This is that time of season. You know, early in the season, you were just trying to get a good half out of it and, and then start trying to compile minutes on top of that. And, and now here we are going into game eight, and, and this is when you need to start really getting honing in close on a full 60 minutes. Uh, you know, that's what it's going to take. Everybody's got the experience now and, uh, you know, across the conference. And so uh, it's going to be full, full 60 minute games if you want to go and accomplish the things that you want to do. Coach, the, the last few weeks we've seen a, a contribution coming from Namdi. He's got seven tackles mm -hmm. in each of the last two games. What are your thoughts on how he's kind of stepped up? You know, this that was a big gift for us and, and didn't understand it quite as much at the time we do now. And, and what he brings to the table. You know, Nandy uh, is a very intelligent young man. He understands the integrity of our defense. He can play, honestly, about three or four possessions for us and we wouldn't miss a beat. And so that's really where he becomes a big feather in your hat. And, and so you're building depth with that. And then he's getting some quality playing time right now, which is, you know, just helping him get better and better as, as uh, each game comes around. You got Bud Clark back from injury a couple of weeks ago as well, which has has to be helpful as well. What have you seen from him? Well, you know, he's made a couple of big plays and uh, that have been game changing type plays. And so, you know, he had the big interception versus Oklahoma State. He had the big interception the other night. You know, those are game changers for us. And and so, you know, Bud understands football. Bud, uh, you know, he's still dealing with the the injury a little bit, but continues to improve day by day. 
And, uh, you know, you start talking about him, you start talking about Abe Kamara and Namdi and, and Mark Perry and all those guys back there, uh, you know, getting some of that depth, which we're going to need, uh, is going to pay off for us as this season continues. What type of Charlotte? Oh, okay, oh, sorry, you talk about injuries. Is there a, a timeline for Bradford to return? Yeah, you know, Nook is getting better. And, uh, you know, we were hopeful and still kind of keeping fingers crossed that uh, he's at least available for this week. Um, and, and if so, you know, that would kind of be one of those dire needs and if we got into any issues. And then, you know, outside of that, I, I think more more realistically, we're looking at probably one more week. You guys, it seems like you guys are going to be on the run to face on a lot of dual third quarterbacks. West Virginia is obviously more of a <laughs> traditional type. Yes, yeah. what type of challenge is he going to be for uh, you guys? Well, he's going to execute the offense, you know, and, and any time that you face those dual threat quarterbacks that, uh, you know, that pre presents a challenge for any defense. I don't care if what defense you run, you know, it presents a big challenge. And so, uh, you know, it's a little bit back to not, not basic football by any means because he's surrounded by a bunch of great guys, but he's going to execute, you know, what's being called uh, for them. And so we feel, you know, there's some aspects of it as, as a defensive guy that you sit there and you go, okay, um, I, I like this a little bit better right now. And, uh, and then there's other aspects of it, though, that, uh, you know, the perfection that he has with it, uh, you sit there and you go, maybe, maybe I'd rather have the other. So it's a, it's a toss-up either way. Coach, last week against K-State, you, you guys had a big fourth and one stop. Mm -hmm. How proud do you get in those moments when your defense is able to make a play like that? Well, you know, it, it, well, obviously at any moment you're going to get proud of, of something like that. That was that was a big time moment right there, you know, and, and we sat there and we talked about it. You know, big players rise up in big games and especially in big moments. And, and that's what they did as a defensive unit. And, and so, you know, we needed that stop. The thing is, is we know that we got to win the takeaway battle. And, and from a takeaway standpoint, it was kind of evened up in my, my eyes because you count, you count uh, turnovers on downs, the same thing. You know, and and so in order for us to go win this game, we needed to get into the plus ca category, and that's what put us in that plus category. And so, you know, from from my standpoint, from a defensive standpoint, we had three takeaways, you know, two takeaways and a and a turnover on downs all in the second half. That's the difference in the game. Coach, it seems like in every game this season, mostly in the last two, the defense either a play or a drive, maybe they're not playing, so they're just like no more, and they just like lock up, right? <laughs> it just it just seems like just they get it and then yeah. adjustments or whatever. Yeah. What does that say about your unit and just how I guess the, the, what it takes to just make that transition to where you just lock down the yeah. opposer? Yeah. Well, I think you know sometimes we and and this is natural. I think it, a lot of teams do it, and we're kind of getting to the point where we need to get out of that, and and that's where you're going to get more minutes out of them, you know, some of it is not always just about adjustment. Some of it's about execution of what you got in. Now, if we'll go out there and we'll execute it and it's not working, then now you got to start making your adjustments. And so I think some of the things that were happening to us, like in Oklahoma State that were happening to us, in my opinion, it was it was more or less our execution, not, not us adjusting. And, uh, you know, as the game went on, we had to continue to make some adjustments and stuff, but uh, uh, more, <clears throat> more or less, it was more about executing things. We can do that and and go out and execute it at a very fast pace right off the bat then and not try to do more than what you're supposed to do because I think we've kind of gotten in that point of, of we're trying to do more because we think we're, we're playing a, an opponent that is extremely good and I've got to do more than what I'm coached to do. And all you really got to go back and really hone in on what you do. And then everything else will take care of itself and the plays will come to you. They're starting to learn that and understand that. And as we continue to grow, it, it should start to uh, show itself. You know, Coach, in an odd stack front, sometimes it's tough to, to get pressure on a quarterback like mm -hmm. you might want to. When you're facing a, a guy like JT Daniels this week who is more of a pocket passer, does that present an opportunity to maybe do some creative things and bring pressure? Yeah, yeah. I think there's got going to have to be a lot of different things that we're going to have to do. And, and you know, you sit there and you start comparing it to the last couple of weeks with a quarterback that, uh, you know, that can pull it down and hurt you with his feet real fast. Uh, you, you start to... Not, not get cautious, but you play some caution cards from time to time because it, you, you know, you don't want him banging his, his head off the goalpost from 80 out. 
and, and uh, you know, we're going to have to get creative with these things. There's nothing that JT hasn't seen, and there's nothing that that offensive line hasn't seen. And and so we're just going to have to do a really good job of winning our one-on-one -on -one battles and create that pressure, make him feel the pressure in the pocket, and, uh, you know, get some batted balls and stuff.